I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Benin to introduce an address by the Vice President. Excellence, Mr. Excellencies, Mr. President of the General Assembly, heads of state and government, heads of delegations, Your Excellency, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to this august assembly Ms. Miriam Shabitaleta, Vice President of the Republic of Benin, who has the privilege of delivering to the General Assembly the message of Mr. Patrice Talon, President of the Republic of Benin, Head of Government, Head of State. Madam, you have the full attention of the 76th session of the General Assembly. Your Excellency, President of the United Nations General Assembly, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellency, Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, his Excellency, Mr. Patrice Talon, President of the Republic of Benin, who is unable to attend, has instructed me to deliver the following statement on his behalf. I quote, I would like to begin, Mr. President, by thanking you for the excellent conduct of the work of this 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. The theme of this session is Building Resilience Through Hope to Recover from COVID-19, Rebuild Sustainably, Respond to the Needs of the Planet, Respect the Rights of People, and Revitalize the United Nations. When we observe the current state of the world on different levels, we recognize that this theme is indeed very significant, meaningful, and in line with our experiences. It invites us to let go of the ever-present and growing skepticism of the despair that is increasingly gaining ground in our hearts in order to solve our current problems and rebuild sustainably. Mr. President, for some time now, the international community has been facing the global and destructive reality of the COVID-19 pandemic. In this regard, my country appreciates the high priority accorded by the United Nations and its specialized agencies, in particular the World Health Organization, to the search for a definitive solution to this health crisis. Broad and ongoing mobilization, as well as the pooling of efforts, have enabled the development of vaccines. Immunization rates across the world are fairly high, even if Africa still has a low vaccination rate and continues to face other infections which are just as deadly, such as malaria, and HIV AIDS. Regarding our national management of COVID-19, the state of Benin has opted for the comprehensive vaccination of all citizens, as well as granting subsidies of several billion CFA francs to people and companies whose activities have been impacted by the pandemic. Here, I would like to thank all the partners who have supported our country in its fight to achieve the SDGs in line with the government's action program. Regarding the need to rebuild sustainably, for us, this is a matter of working to anticipate the occurrence of future calamities. Isolated, one-off local actions alone are no longer enough. Each state, each continent must open up to others so that through coordinated joint efforts, through synergies of action, the world can definitively and permanently rid itself of its fears. As for the insecurity generated by violent extremism and banditry, 
My country faces two situations with crisis generating potential. The terrorist threat, which constitutes a real danger to its northern borders, and maritime piracy in the south. To cope with this, in addition to taking the necessary measures domestically, Benin is joining all initiatives at the regional and international level in order to guarantee peace, free movement, and security to all its citizens and all those living on its territory. The same is also true for the needs of the planet. The same kind of attitude and behavior are hoped for are expected to save a planet subjected to all sorts of abuse, overexploitation, excesses of production and consumption. We must go beyond our individual sovereignties and force ourselves to plan all actions relating to the needs of countries and the planet together, meeting food needs, water and energy needs, needs that I would call strategic, must be done taking into account current threats and future generations. Turning now to respect for human rights, the SDGs remind us of them daily through the goals adopted by all of us. Our country believes that achieving the SDGs is the most concrete and surest way to respect human rights. This is why Benin is endeavoring through different strategies to mobilize resources that would enable our fellow citizens to have access to an adequate food system with school canteens throughout the entire country, quality lifelong education, health care through the insurance for strengthening human capital system which protects the most disadvantaged, drinking water by extending our distribution networks and energy by extending the electricity network and expanding clean energies. Today, thanks to the successful issuance of SDG Euro bonds, our country has been able to mobilize most of the resources needed to achieve the majority of the SDGs. At the political level, with the reform of the party system, the regular organization of elections, good governance, and fighting corruption, Benin guarantees its citizens the enjoyment of human rights. Mr. President, the progress made by our country in recent years is tangible, palpable, concrete, and it leads us to believe that due to this, we deserve a seat on the United Nations Human Rights Council for the period 2022-2024 so that we can share our experiences in the protection and promotion of human rights. Speaking from this rostrum is therefore a solemn occasion for me to recall that our country's candidacy has already been formally endorsed by the African Union. And backed by this support from our continent, we also invite all member states of the United Nations to support Benin's candidacy during the elections to be held in New York in October 2021. Mr. President, Finally, on the question of the revitalization of the United Nations, a reform of the institution is absolutely necessary, one that is founded on the principles of equality, justice, and solidarity between member states. Times have changed, the world has changed, and our organization must also change and adapt to the times. We appeal to the spirit of universal consensus to make the United Nations a modern, free, and just institution. In the meantime, my country reaffirms its support for diplomatic initiatives aimed at the creation of, of a viable Palestinian state entitled with the attributes of full international sovereignty and coexisting peacefully with the State of Israel. Benin also supports the efforts of the United Nations to find a definitive solution to the question of Western Sahara. Finally, my country remains in solidarity with the resolution adopted by the 34th Summit of the African Union in February 21 in Addis Abeba regarding the economic blockade imposed on Cuba by the United States and reaffirms the need to put an end to it in the name of promoting peace and development. Benin therefore calls for the normalization of relations between Cuba and the United States, two countries that are friends of Benin.
our hope, because one must always live with hope, is that the various appeals made here will be heeded by all in order to bring about a world that is modern, united, free, just, safe, and prosperous for everyone. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Vice President of the Republic of Benin for the statement just made. The Assembly will hear an address by Her Excellency Rebecca Niandang de Mabior, Vice President of the Republic of South Sudan.